Hey, econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. I've made a lot of videos about monetary policy, but this one, I'm going to completely explain everything you need to know using this. First, let's do an overview. The money market graph that you've already learned shows a supply and a demand for money, and that sets the equilibrium nominal interest rate. And the interest rate determines how much investment spending and consumer spending on interest-sensitive consumer goods takes place in the economy. So if the money supply increases, the interest rate's gonna fall, and that will lead to more investment and more spending. And if the money supply decreases, then interest rates will go up, and that'll lead to less investment and less spending. And this process of controlling the money supply to affect interest rates is called monetary policy. Okay, so how does the central bank change the money supply? Well, there's three ways. They could twist it, pull it, or bop it. Stay with me, it's gonna make sense. First, we have to differentiate between the monetary base and the money supply. The monetary base is made up of bank reserves, which are not part of the money supply, and currency in circulation, which is part of the money supply. And the rest of the money supply is made up of checkable deposits. This is money in checking accounts that you can use to buy goods and services. And the ratio of the monetary base to the money supply is the money multiplier. So if the reserve requirement was 20%, making the money multiplier five, the money supply would be five times bigger than the monetary base. Okay, now that you have that down, let's talk about monetary policy. Let's assume there's a recession, so GDP is down and unemployment is high, and the central bank wants to increase the money supply to decrease interest rates and increase spending. Now to do that, to change the money supply, the central bank can do three things. The first one is changing the reserve requirement. Instead of requiring banks to hold 20% in reserves, they can tell banks to hold only 10% in reserves. So if someone deposits $100 of cash into the bank, the bank doesn't need to hold $20, it only needs to hold 10. So the bank's excess reserves, the amount they're actually gonna loan out, is $90 instead of just 80. And when the bank loans it out, that's when the whole money creation process takes place. It ends up in somebody's pocket. That person puts it in another bank. The bank holds 10%, loans it out to somebody else. It makes its way back in the banking system that keeps happening over and over again. That initial cash deposit of $100 can generate up to $900 of new money. But notice that's way bigger than the $400 it could have been if the reserve requirement was 20%. The point here is that the central bank can increase or decrease the money supply by changing the reserve requirement and twisting the rules for the bank. They're changing the money supply by changing that reserve requirement and changing the money multiplier. Twist it. Now the second thing the central bank can do to change the money supply is to pull it. That's the discount rate. Remember that the central bank doesn't have the authority or the ability to tell private banks what interest rates to charge. They just can't tell commercial banks what to charge for mortgages or student loans or car loans. But there is one interest rate that the central bank does have direct control over, it's the discount rate. It's the rate they charge banks for loans. Again, let's assume the economy is doing poorly and the central bank wants to increase the money supply and decrease interest rates. To do this, they can decrease the discount rate, making it cheaper and easier for banks to borrow from the central bank, and that'll lead to more loans. For the banks, now that making loans is more profitable than owning other assets, they're gonna loan out more money. The banks are gonna cash out those other assets, and that'll increase the monetary base, and when they loan that money out, that's gonna increase the money supply. And that increased money supply will decrease interest rates and lead to more spending, and that's monetary policy. Pull it. And the third way the central bank can change the money supply is the most important one. It's the name of the game, open market operations. Bop it. In addition to making loans, commercial banks have all sorts of assets like car loans and student loans and mortgages and government bonds. These are all assets and they're not part of the monetary base or the money supply. Open market operations are when the central bank buys those government bonds from commercial banks, putting more money in bank reserves. So let's see what happens when the central bank buys a $100 treasury bond from a bank. Instead of owning the bond, now the bank has more money in reserves, which is gonna eventually loan out. But notice that the money supply doesn't actually increase until the bank loans out that money, which we assume they will. When they do lend it out, someone's gonna spend that money, it's gonna end up in another bank, they're gonna hold a portion, loan the rest out, and that keeps happening over and over again, and that increases the money supply. But unlike the example that we did earlier where someone deposited $100 of cash into the bank and they had to hold some in reserves, the bank does not need to hold any of this in reserve. When the central bank buys bonds, all that money becomes excess reserves and all of it can get loaned out. And again, that's when the whole money creation process takes place. The money gets loaned out, makes its way back to another bank. That bank holds a portion, lends the rest out, and eventually the total increase in the money supply will be $1,000. When the central bank uses open market operations to buy bonds, that increases the monetary base and increases the money supply. And of course, it could go the other way. The central bank could sell bonds, so now the bank has less less money to lend out, and that would decrease the monetary base and decrease the money supply. And here's a trick that's gonna help you remember if we wanna increase the money supply and make it bigger, then the central bank has to buy bonds. 
if we want to decrease the money supply and make it smaller, the central bank is going to sell bonds. In addition to the three ways of changing the money supply that I've talked about, there's other ones like quantitative easing. That's when the central bank buys other assets other than bonds like mortgages or car loans. But the point is, these are the three that you definitely have to know. Buffy. Holy. Also, in the real world, monetary policy is a whole lot more complicated than you learn in a macroeconomics class. In your class, we assume that banks hold no excess reserves and they loan all the money out and all that money makes its way back in the banking system. In real life, it doesn't look like that. Oh. But if you understand that monetary policy is changing the money supply to affect interest rates and there's three ways the central bank changes the money supply, you're going to be fine. And of course, to help you remember that, I'm going to add bop it to my wall. By the way, I know your teacher would love a Jacob Clifford autograph signed Bop It, and so I'm gonna raffle both of these off. And there's only three things you need to have to be eligible. Number one is you have to be a teacher. So sorry students, you're not eligible. Number two is you must have purchased licenses from my worksheets or the ultimate review packet for all your students, either this school year or next school year. And number three, you gotta enter the raffle by filling out the form in the description of this video. Remember, only teachers are eligible, so make sure to tell your teacher, because I bet you they want one of these. But don't go anywhere, there's still two things we have to do. First, if you like this video, you're gonna love the ultimate review pack. It includes everything you need to get an A in your class and rock your exams. And the second thing we gotta do, it's time for a pop quiz. Oh, you're out. The questions won't be on the screen for very long, so pause the video, see how you do, and look in the first comment below for the answer key. Thanks for watching, till next time.